Good morning. Good morning, guys. I'm going to do announcements in about one minute. Do you want to say hi quick or shake a hand or something? Do that now and then find your seat, please. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello. All right, guys, unless you're walking to your seat, you want to close your eyes, bow your heads, and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for, for blessing us with this snowfall and making everything look pretty. I, I love the leaves, and now that they're gone, I like the snow. Uh, but no more snow after this, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, dear Heavenly Father, I pray for everything for the, for the service uh, from, from the time I talk until we lock the doors. Um, uh, I pray that you, you work with the worship team and, and, and you, you, you work with, with Rich when he brings the message and, and in the altar call. And, and then you're with us the rest of the day and throughout the week. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, men's breakfast. we got a busy week coming up. Look at this. Men's breakfast, December 4th at 8 a.m. That is an awesome breakfast. It's a great time of fellowship. Um, maybe I'll try to go this one. <laughs> Uh, and then the Christmas banquet. Christmas banquet's the next day, December 5th, so that's a week from today. If you aren't signed up, you guys should really want, you, you should sign up. Um, that's at 4.30, okay? Um, let's see, let's see. Ladies' Christmas party, December 10th at 6 p.m. And then one of my favorite things we do, the Christmas Eve Candlelight service, December 24th at 6 p.m. That's really nice. That's a really cool thing that we do. It's really special. Everybody has a candle. We light it. Um, and, uh, you know, we get into the real reason for the season. Uh, new Sunday school class. Um, if you, if, if there is, an, is a new one starting, I'm sorry, Stan, is there, I'll refer to you. Is there a new one starting? I just, is, is it a new class starting? Okay, great. If there's a new class starting, guys, Stan Bullard's right there. He just stood up. If you don't know him, uh, go meet him. He's a really nice guy. He'll, int he'll, he'll, he'll talk about the new class. Um, you could sign up with him. And then uh, the Behold uh, service, the gathering tonight, uh, we're not going to have that. What's up, Tom? Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, we're not having um, Behold tonight, um, Richie's service, we're not having that tonight, uh, so, so we'll look for that next week, right? All right, awesome. Um, here we go. All right, let's have a good service. Suzanne? Good morning. If you're able, after all this great Thanksgiving, you, please stand. <laughs> now touch your toes. No. <laughs> right. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. Well, and if you can't touch your toes, then you just got to read extra loud. Okay? And we're in Romans today. I think. There we are. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, refocusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. There's a few announcements I need to make this morning. Um, a while back, I announced that we had a new secretary, Ginger Snyder. Uh, she 
work for about not quite two weeks and she realized that her skill level wasn't up to the task, okay? So she decided she wasn't going to be secretary anymore. But we have somebody in-house, Chris Strop, and uh, she's our secretary, she's up here. <laughs> Praise God, that was exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> also, uh, we have a new custodian, and uh, Chris was a custodian, but Ray Hines is now taking the position. There he is. Praise God. Amen. What's that? No. Praise God. Also, we have a new Sunday school superintendent, and I should say a new team that represents that position, okay? And I'm talking about Stan, Lorelei, and Patty. And they, if they would stand wherever they are, Praise God. Amen. I'd like to tell you what they're responsible for. They're definitely responsible for teachers, substitute teachers, curriculum, and certainly the place where the class would be held. So that's your starting point. If you've got anything to do with Sunday school as far as questions or whatever. So praise God. Did they have you come up, Stan, yet? Oh, evidently that didn't happen. Stan's going to come up, and uh, by the way, you may be seated. Stan's going to be talking about something very dear to his heart. Thank you, Pastor. Real quick, it was announced that we were going to have a new Sunday school. I'm going to call it a home group gathering because it's not really going to be a class. Each of us, the word burden is a churchy word. And oftentimes, somebody will be given a burden for the healing, healing ministry or for evangelism. I would say the burden on my heart has always been for f marriages and families. That's the burden I have on my heart. So the Lord said to me that we ought to start a and I'm going to call it a couples group meeting during this Sunday school hour. I understand that I've been a part of home groups many years. They flourish, they fade out. They flourish, they fade out. And you all know that we're time is hard now. Our culture is so busy. I'm just asking you, though, if for one hour on Sunday morning, you come early, that we could have like a home group meeting. It's a group meeting. I, I'll be facilitating, but not necessarily teaching. We will be based in the, in the word. And I'm, in, I've asked around, and many couples say this, is, this would need a need. I'm inviting all couples to come. Um, there's one thing I want to say, and I've got to try to say this correctly. First of all, my wife got this off the internet, so it's got to be true. But I can't <laughs> but I can't reference who said it. But what she found on the internet was out of 100 marriages in our culture, only about 5 to 6 reach their 50th anniversary. Now, even for death, I, I, that, that makes me sad. That really makes me sad. So I'm, I want to create a place, a safe place, you, there's many books out there on the table about successful marriage. And there's great counseling in this church on marriages. 
But just as it's often said about raising children, and it takes a village to raise the children, oftentimes I think relationships for couples are very, very important. And I want to do my best to create a place where relationships can be built so that we can pray for one another and encourage one another. I look forward to starting this on the first Sunday in January. All couples are invited. And I'm not sure yet where, where we will be meeting in the church. That will be figured out a little later. But that's my vision. That's my burden. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many had a great Thanksgiving? Isn't it awesome to be thankful? Praise God. Well, we're going to have a good service today. I hope you haven't eaten too much since Thursday or including Thursday. Today, just open your heart and life to Jesus. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God's going to touch your life in a special way today. How many believe that? We're going to invite the Spirit, so stand, please. Praise God. It's good to have all of you here today. God's so good. Can you say amen? Together now, dear Spirit of God, come now, touch our heart, touch our lives, manifest your presence, heal, restore, deliver. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We love you, Jesus. We magnify you. So precious, so awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus.
just lift our hands right now, church, together. Come on. Oh, we praise you. Just make a joyful noise this morning.
couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise, treasures that fade, that never know.
today. Can you say amen? Pastor Johnny and the team did a great job. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to remind you that we do have an offering plate in the middle aisle. Uh, ushers will not be coming by you to take up the offering. We encourage you strongly to give as unto the Lord. God is so good to us and we in turn want to share some of that that he has blessed us with. We have some prayer concerns today, and they are as follows. Uh, we need to pray for Robin, Ron, for Robin's mother, Pat. They've all had this cold. Let's just believe God to heal them completely. Mary Dries still needs healing for her back. Let's believe God for her. Doug and Violet Stendler still need a touch up from on high for them today. Also, Diane would like us to pray for Sean. He is going through a very difficult time. He's going back to some of the old ways. We need to lift him up in prayer that God would set him free. Donnie Fisher's uh, mom is in the nursing home, Elaine Fisher. 
We want to lift her up in prayer and believe God to heal her. We need to pray for Nathan. Nathan has experienced three people that have left this world. All of them were Christians. They went to be with the Lord, but nonetheless, that certainly is hard on anyone. So we want to lift Nathan up during this time of bereavement that God would just be very real to him in a special way. BKI. How many students from BKI are here today? Oh, amen. Well, we want to pray for BKI for this particular school that God would pour out his spirit upon the students in a special way. Also, daycare, continue to lift that up in prayer. Let's believe God to prosper it in every way. And then our country. Boy, oh boy, I mention this often, how we need to pray for our country. Can you say amen? Would you stand as we look to the Lord today? Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for everything you do for us. We thank you for the way that you touch our hearts and touch our lives. We just ask that, dear Father, that you would move in a special way on the behalf of Robin and Ron and Pat, that you would just heal them in the name of Jesus. Heal Mary Dries. I pray for Doug, Lord, that you would touch his heart and his life and help him to just open his life to you and to believe you for your protection and healing. For Violet, that you would help her with her breathing in Jesus' name. Touch Sean today, Lord. You know what's happened to him, and he needs to really turn around again. So we ask, Lord, that you would speak to his heart and that repentance, that gift, would be his today in Jesus' name. For Elaine Fisher, Father, we ask that you touch her body, that you would heal and make her every bit whole in the name of Jesus. We ask for Nathan today, Lord. Help him, Father, as he has suffered another loss another brother-in-law that's gone on to be with the Lord. I, I pray, Lord, that you'll put your arms of love around him and that you will grant him right now a real touch of your special love, that you would hug him in Jesus' name. We ask for BKI, that, Lord, that you continue to bless it and pour out upon it, we pray, and help his students to become equipped. We ask for daycare, that you, Lord, would just bless it in a mighty way. Our country, Lord, and I, I say our country. I ask, O oh Lord, that you would raise up a standard, that you would move in a mighty way, that you would touch, Lord, this nation afresh and anew, that, Lord, that there would be a great move of your spirit, there would be another great awakening. I ask that in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. Good to have all of you here today. I'm going to introduce somebody to you that most of you know. I'd like to introduce to you today Rich, and that's certainly what he would say is better to have Patty. They're the founders of Starting Line Ministries. They've been part of our congregation for a long time. They've been such a blessing in every way. God just uses them in a special way. And, you know, Rich has a way of communicating the word of God in a unique way that I really appreciate. And he's going to be coming today, and he has a message that's entitled, Here Comes Trouble. And then I looked at the bulletin. <laughs> I see three people on the bulletin there. Here comes trouble. That's a little scary, isn't it? Praise God. Well, Rich is going to begin back there, and he's got some special things he's going to be doing, and I know you're going to be blessed today. Can you say amen? Let's welcome him as our speaker, Evangelist. <laughs> Rich Breland. Amen.
Wow. How was that for timing, huh? That worked out perfect. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Well, welcome to Brookside. Who's ready to cause some trouble today? Woo! Woo! Hey, quick shout out. I saw all the Property Jesus shirts out there. Thank you, guys. I'm, I'm feeling the love. Feeling the love. And uh, everybody from BKI is wearing their trouble shirts today because, you know, those group of, I'm going to say kids, not, we're not kids, but we meet upstairs there in what we call the upper room, and uh, God's causing some trouble up there, isn't he? Huh, Heather? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So thank you for that. And uh, I wanted the title, uh, the, the sermon is Trouble, a four-letter word. <laughs> but then I thought I might get in trouble. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to quit my day job. Hey, I also want to say, so how many people are watching or have watched ch uh, The Chosen? Okay, so you guys may kind of get the concept here. And uh, the thing about uh, Chosen is, uh, first of all, if you haven't watched it, watch it. It's really cool. You can get it free on The Chosen app, or you can buy the DVDs. And, uh, but what it is, it's, uh, it's a theatrical show, a series of shows about Jesus and the disciples, and uh, they do a little, you know, it, it's very biblical, and it's a, they do it very close to the word, but there's some gaps in the word, and they take a little um, liberty in filling in the gaps, and because I've been influenced, and my wife wanted me just to say, if you hear me say anything that maybe isn't exactly in the Bible, I probably heard it in Chosen, and I'm repeating it, all right, so all the Bible scholars that want to come up and tell me afterwards that I said something that wasn't in there, blame it on the chosen, okay? <laughs> so, what about the concept that Jesus is a troublemaker? And we can't say that Jesus was a troublemaker, can we? Because he's still alive, and he's still causing trouble. But what kind of trouble did he cause? I mean, we, we think trouble is like a bad word right? But when Jesus caused trouble, it was a good thing. Um, you know, what did Jesus do? He went, he went against the status quo. Um, people were in their comfort zones. And then this guy named Jesus showed up and started causing trouble. I actually stood here one time before, and I preached about the pool of Bethesda. Does anybody remember that? I had the easy button. You know, that was easy. That was easy, right? Uh, because he, Jesus just went up to this crippled man and said, get up. He didn't have to, like, crawl in the water, or say three Hail Marys or anything. I mean, Jesus just healed him. Get up. But, you know, when I started looking at that, that scripture, and that's in John 5.5, 5, um, he caused, Jesus caused a little trouble there when you dig in deeper. The first thing Jesus did is he told the crippled man to get up and carry his mat. Well, there's a problem. There was some trouble there because it was on the Sabbath. And you're not allowed to carry your mat on the Sabbath because the tradition says you can't do that. So here's this guy who just gets healed. He's been crippled since he was a kid. He gets up and gets to walk. This guy named Jesus tells him to pick up his mat, and he's getting in trouble. I mean, he's only, he's only been walking for about 15 seconds, and already some Pharisee is giving him trouble. See, Jesus causes trouble. And then, all of a sudden, Jesus was in trouble because those same Pharisees said, hey, it's the Sabbath. You can't heal somebody on the Sabbath. And they really didn't like that answer. <laughs> Jesus says, well, I'm the son of man. <laughs> I'm the son of God. <laughs> I can do whatever I want, whenever I want to. Because I, whoa, you talk about going against the status quo causing a little trouble. But I mean, I believe that Jesus, he went there on purpose that day. He knew, Jesus knew it was the Sabbath, and he knew that guy was going to be there, but he, he was starting to shake it up. You know, who remembers that? Uh, was it the cars that used to shake it up? All right, I'm not going to sing that for you. <laughs> Pastor Jerry and I are going to do it later. 
We're, we're going to sing uh, Shake It Up. <laughs> I love doing that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So how many people know about the women, the woman at the well? Okay. So this is a Samaritan woman. And the Bible says that Jesus had to go through Samaria to get to Jerusalem. But did he? He could have gone around like most of the Jews did. They went around because they didn't want to deal with the Samaritans. But I'm claiming that Jesus wanted to cause a little trouble. You know, he went to the well. And it was like noontime. And there's this woman there in the heat of the day collecting water. Why was she collecting water? Well, Jesus knew why. Because she had five husbands and the woman that he was, or the man that she was living with then uh, wasn't her husband. And Jesus proclaimed those things. And then the woman got excited and she went into town. And uh, she proclaimed that this, this man must be the Messiah because he knows everything about me. Now, this isn't in the Bible, but I'm, I had this thought. What about Mary? When Mary became pregnant and she had to go away to Elizabeth, did that cause trouble for Mary? Maybe Mary had to go to the well at the wrong time of day because she wasn't married. So, so maybe Jesus was causing trouble here on earth before, while he was still in the womb. That's quite the troublemaker, isn't it? <laughs> now, my mother would probably say I caused some trouble before I was born, too. But, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, see? I love having hecklers. That's great, Steve. I'm glad you came today. <laughs> no, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> but uh, so Jesus could change the atmosphere where he was. And sometimes that wasn't what the status quo went for the people that were comfortable weren't happy with Jesus being around because he changed things you know but many you know he changed the atmosphere in Samaria because it's the, the scripture tells us that many Samarians believed that he was the Messiah and Jesus also taught them that they didn't have to go to Jerusalem to worship to worship God they could go anywhere they wanted see he he, he broke with the status quo which caused some trouble because now people didn't have to go to a certain place and listen to a certain Pharisee to worship God. Jesus told them they could worship, God, worship him wherever they were. What a troublemaker. What a troublemaker. Uh, third example of the troublemaker. The woman caught in adultery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, we caught the, now, it takes two to tango, right? Right, right? But, but there are, the, the Pharisees are only worried about the woman, you know? <laughs> no mention here of stoning the guy, <laughs> right? So this group of, group of men come to Jesus, and of course they're trying to get Jesus in trouble. Good luck with that. He already was in trouble. He's a troublemaker. So they bring this woman who's, accused of committing adultery, and they're like, Rabbi, what do we do? The law says we have to stone her. And of course, they got the stones, and they're all ready, and they already picked out their rock, and oh, this is going to be great. And Jesus takes them in, and he grabs a stick, and he starts writing in the dust. How many people would pay to know what he wrote? You know? I asked that question once. I, I, I had two questions that one of the first pastors that ever mentored me, uh, and I, I asked two questions. I said, did La how long did Lazarus live after Jesus rose him from the dead? And, you know, when did he die? And what did Jesus write in the dust? And the answer was, if God wanted you to know, he would have put it in the Bible. <laughs> so we're free to make it up, whatever it was. Maybe he was doing new math. Or something there, you know, or <laughs> pi r squared, or, or he's probably like, Father, why did you send me to these people? 
please, please. So then Jesus says to the accusers, okay, anyone here that's free of sin, go ahead, throw the first stone. He looks down, and he finishes his pi r squared, and, uh, and he looks up, and everybody's gone, right? Boy, he might have just caused a little trouble there for, for these righteous people. They all had to leave with their tail between their legs. Plus, it was in public. He didn't, he didn't you know, pull them into the other room and call them sinners. He did it right to their face, right out in public. You know, and then, of course, Jesus looked up and says, your accusers are gone, go and sin no more. You're forgiven, which is pretty cool. So that's Jesus. He was quite the troublemaker, wasn't he? And, you know, the book of John says that all the books of all the world would, couldn't hold all the miracles and things that Jesus did. And uh, so I just touched on three. And uh, I'm going to start over again, do some more. We should be out of here by uh, noontime Wednesday. Does that sound good? No. But so I think we've established that for that Jesus caused some trouble. So now let's move on to the disciples and the apostles, right? So, so we get to the book of Acts and... Uh, Jesus sends the disciples out. Can you uh, put up uh, picture number one? Okay, and so in Acts 1.8, I'm going to try to read it off the back. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about, the, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth. Wow. That's a pretty big area to cover. There was only 12 of them, you know. So they spread out. And no. No, but they, he, Jesus also told them in Matthew to go out and create disciples, right? And so that's how we got here because somebody, I mean, when you think about it, you, right? We're, you know, like Jesus has a lineage. Now, there's no way to prove it. But again, I'm making this up. But, uh, but really, we're all here because of the disciples. I mean, if the disciples didn't tell somebody, and they told somebody, and they told somebody, and they told somebody, and they told somebody, we could go on forever. But, but I mean, that's why we're here, because they went out and caused some trouble. So the, the, fir the first uh, one that I want to talk about where the disciples caused some trouble was um, in uh, Ephesus. And uh, there was a silversmith named Demetrius. Does everybody know that story? Okay, so for those that don't, I'm going to say it anyway, and the people that do, you're just going to have to hear it again. <laughs> so, so there was a silversmith in Ephesus, and uh, he made idols out of silver for people to worship. Right? Well, here come the disciples. Right? And they're like, no, 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 no. We, we, you don't want to do that. The Messiah has come. His name is Jesus. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. So as Christianity spread across Ephesus, Demetrius' business wasn't going very well. People started stopped buying silver idols. Those disciples, they're causing trouble for people. <laughs> Troublemakers, you know, stealing poor Demetrius' income. What is he to do? Well, he caused a riot. And so he called all of the other silversmiths together, and uh, they threw the disciples in jail and because uh, they were troublemakers. They got in trouble. Acts 16, 16, the oracle of Delphi. I just like the way that sounds, right? The oracle of, all right, so it was this girl that would tell fortunes, right? So, so Paul and who was there with Paul? Come on, come on, come on. Silas, all right. All right, you get an A+, plus, whoever that was. Uh, so Paul and Cyrus, Silas are walking around, and uh, this girl who could tell fortunes 
just kept following her and bugging her, bugging her and bugging her. And what would he say? He said, one day we were going down to the place of prayer. We met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell fortunes, tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day. Got, Paul got so exasperated that he turned around to the demon within her. I command you in the name of Jesus to come out, and instantly the demon left her. Well, that sounds great, right? Unless you were the guy who was making money by her telling fortunes. Uh-oh. Paul just caused a little trouble. So they got mad, and they accused Paul and Silas, and uh, they threw him in jail. They went to jail for casting out demons and declaring the love of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Boy, those people are troublemakers when they take away your income. So what happened? They went in. They were in the jail, and they were all bound up and everything, but Paul and Silas, like all of us would do, right, if we were jailed, we would just pray to God the whole time, right, and praise him and worship him. And I know I would, but okay, maybe not. Maybe not. But uh, then there was this great earthquake, and their chains and their bindings came loose, and they could have just run out of the prison. And in fact, the jailkeeper uh, sees that the doors are open, and he's going to kill himself because he knows he's going to get killed because all the prisoners escaped. Well, the prisoners didn't escape. They were just in there worshiping God. And so the jailkeeper gets saved, and his family gets saved. Those troublemakers, those disciples are, you know, are, are such troublemakers. So we just kind of moved through the book of Acts here, right? And um, how many chapters are in the book of Acts? 28. All right, we got some Bible scholars here. I'm not, I had to look it up. So... Now I'm going to sound like really sorry. So the epistles, right, are, come after the book of Acts, right? And if you read the epistles, in all the epistles, the epistles end, right? There's a prayer or a goodbye and an amen. But the book of Acts in chapter 28 just sort of stops, right? So I know we can't rewrite the Bible or add anything or take anything away. But what if there was a chapter 29 and a chapter 30 and a chapter 31, okay? And that's where we come in, okay? Because we can write our own book. We're not going to rewrite the Bible, and we're not going to add to those scriptures. My teacher just walked in that were canonized. Do you like that big word I just used? <laughs> But we can write our own personal chapter 29 and chapter 30 and chapter 31 because Jesus sent us out, didn't he? In Matthew 10, 7, 8, he says, Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, cast out demons, give freely as you have received. Wow. How many people here have cast out a demon in the last 24 hours? Okay, well, all right, if I take the 24 hours right, I saw a couple hands go up. Praise God. Thank you. You're a troublemaker. <laughs> Amen. Amen. How many people here have ever raised someone from the dead? All right, I'm going to raise my hand. Okay? And, I'm, and I cry when I say that because I didn't raise anybody from the dead. Jesus did. But it was eight years ago. Ten years ago, my brother lay dead on the floor, and I prayed over him in the name of Jesus, and he's alive today, okay? And so that's what the, that's what the Holy Spirit is about. That's what God is about. He gave all these gifts to us, and they're there. Can, uh, I think I skipped slide number two. Can you put up number two? I think that it's up. You're so good, Kevin. That is so awesome. 
All right. Well, let's let's go to slide number three. Slide number three. Uh, I told you I'd get you settled in there. Can you see it, Suzanne? Yeah, see. <laughs> First Peter four ten. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? No, not really, but I'm going to try up here anyway. Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. And all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. So we all have these gifts. Every one of us. Every person here has every fruit of the Spirit, every gift of the Spirit. But it's a gift, right? Just like the gift of salvation. Every person in the whole world is entitled to the gift of salvation. But you have to receive it. You have to receive it. And you have to use it. And some of these gifts, you have to practice. Like, I know David is a f- savant, but I imagine he didn't pick up a guitar one day and play like he plays now. Do you? It did it. All right, well, that's the power of the Holy Spirit then. <laughs> but no, I mean, he had to practice. I mean, Johnny who is like, you know, my worship leader, idol, was out practicing this morning, you know, because that's how it works. And so if we're going to move in the gifts of the Spirit, we have to work on it, and we have to practice it, and we have to try. We need to accept them, just like salvation. Oh, well, I've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, that's a choice you made not the choice God made, right? Um, I will say that, uh, or I used to be able to say that I don't have the gift of prophecy because I never prophesied over anyone. And in the last few weeks, um, I asked God to help me with that and with some encouragement. And uh, I'm not going to be proud here, or, but I just want to tell you, because you guys know me, right? I'm just this nerd that loves Jesus, right? But given the correct atmosphere and the correct environment, the other week, I stood before five people with my eyes closed and prophesied over them. And what I found out after I opened my eyes, it was pretty accurate. And, and the greatest testimony is that Bing did it too. I'm throwing Bing under the bus, all right? But, and so Patty was like, yeah, I knew Bing could do it. But when you did it, then I knew that that was the Holy Spirit, all right? Yeah, you know, it's just like Jesus in Nazareth, right? He couldn't get anything done over there while my wife was there, all right? But, but my, my point, I said all that to say this, that you know what? Every one of you has the gift of prophecy. You just have to, you have to practice. You have to work at it. Every one of you has the gift of evangelism. You know, every one of you. It's in us. It's in us. So I'm working on doing a, a, like a report on D.L. Moody. Has anybody heard of D.L. Moody? All right, the Moody Bible Institute, Moody Radio. You know, now he was back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, so there's only a few of us here, Dale, that would remember him. <laughs> but, but, um, <laughs> yeah. But D.L. Moody had this awesome ministry, and he would go and speak, and he, he spoke a lot in England, and, you know, and in Ireland and Scotland, and he would go, and they'd have these big meetings, you know, and it would take 10 days to sail over there. So when he'd go, he'd go for three or four months. And um, people would turn out to these meetings, and at every meeting, like two or three people would get saved, which is pretty awesome, right? I mean, that's, I mean I'd take that. If, if there are three people in this audience that would pray for salvation today, I'd do a cartwheel, you know? 
That's pretty awesome. But D.L. was not baptized in the Holy Spirit. Some people call him Dwight, D.L., you know. But uh, there was a group of people that started praying for him every Friday. They would pray that D.L. would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And uh, one day he was in New York City, walking down the street on Wall Street of all places, and the Holy Spirit hit him. And he knew it. And he knew it. And it took a while. And he found a place where he could be alone. And he spent a couple of hours just praying and received the gift of tongues. And he's praying, he's praying. And the next day he was in New York City because he was heading back to Europe. So it takes 10 days to get back to Europe. And he goes to these meetings. And at the very first meeting, after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, 300 people gave their lives to Christ. Now, and nothing changed other than the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See how powerful that is? I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And yeah, I, I, I talk to people all the time. And I was one of them, I want you to know, that uh, when we first started our ministry out in Sturgis, a guy came to help me, to help us. And uh, Patty and I were not spirit-filled. And this guy was like so intense getting on me, I was ready to kick him out. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I, you know, I've got this ministry, you know, and look, well, people are getting saved here. And, you know, we've been doing it three, four years now. And, you know, don't be coming here telling me what to do. And uh, but <laughs> are you watching, Danny? <laughs> but anyway, um, but it took a little while. And Patty and I went to the Lakeland Revival down in Florida. Does anybody remember the Lakeland Revival? Okay, yeah, to this day, Roy Fields, man, I just love his music ministry. But we went down there, and uh, there was this little breakout room, and they, they asked, is anybody here hasn't been baptized in the Holy Spirit? I'm like, yeah, I raised my hand. And they're like, all right, well, come over here. And there was some guy, I don't know who it was. And he prayed with us. And sure enough, all of a sudden, I'm making these weird utterances, you know. And uh, it changed my life. Changed my life. And uh, so I'm going to ask a little wordy question here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Is So does anybody... Feel, you know when you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit? You feel the atmosphere change, you know? So how many people in here change the atmosphere when they walk into a room or into a supermarket, you know? Because that's what Jesus told us to do is just to go out, just go and change the atmosphere. Have you ever been someplace where, I mean, I can do it at work because I'm the boss. <laughs> and I can kind of make the atmosphere any way I want to <laughs> based on my attitude, <laughs> right? <laughs> it can be, or it can be, oh, wait, great, we're here today. But we can do that anywhere. And we can shift it. And, and that's what, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we're filled with the love of Christ, you know, when things aren't going good and gas is so much a gallon and people are praising my buddy, the truck driver, Brandon Brown. Does everybody know that Brandon Brown is a real person and he won a NASCAR race? And it's the first race he ever won. And now he has more fans than anybody I know. <laughs> but I just wanted to make sure you all knew his last name because he's a real person, okay? <laughs> We can shift that atmosphere, you know? Yeah, so maybe, you know, we're all rooting for this guy. But you know what? We know who's in control, right? So we're not going to get down about it. We're not, we're not you know, you know the, on Monday, uh, I was doing some volunteer driving for Christ in Action, and I took a, a semi-truck load of pallet racks down to Tupelo, Mississippi, and uh, the truck broke down. And I was in Bristol, Tennessee, and I needed a new fuel filter on a Monday, the week of Thanksgiving. Da, 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 da. So I, I got to the Volvo dealer. Uh, I was driving a Volvo semi-truck. And um, it's not a Freightliner, by the way. Uh, and so I get there, 
And I knew that I had to shift the atmosphere because I had somewhere I had to go and I needed to get to Tupelo and unload that and load something else so I could get back in time for Wednesday night Thanksgiving dinner at my in-law's house. So if I went in there and didn't have Jesus on my breath, I don't know if I was going to get that fuel filter as fast <laughs> as I needed to get it. And it was still, you know, it's actually it was exit 13, so it's the same exit probably where Richard Gunn lives. In fact, I was almost going to call him and say, hey, I'm stuck over here. You want to go hang out or something? <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, till I left there, everybody was happy. I had a new fuel filter. The, the, the mechanic said, have a blessed trip, <laughs> you, you know, and... Uh, kind of shifted the environment you know they had a truck come in that they had just fixed on a wrecker and they had just fixed it and it came in on a wrecker so the environment could have been a little you know but we just were being jesus you know and uh that's what that's what we can do and as disciples that's what we're supposed to do because there's supposed to be something on us that other people see that they want and in our ministry that's patty and i have led more people to salvation with a smile and a happy thought. And people see, have seen me at the drag strip lose a drag race and still smile. Lose a national championship by five points and still smile. And let me tell you, that's the Holy Spirit. That's not me. <laughs> I, got, I got news for you. So I, I want to wrap this up. But I'm going to ask this tough question. And, and I want you to be honest. I really do. I don't come up here, what, once every nine, ten weeks, so it's not like I'm always pestering you, you know. But how many people here are baptized in the Holy Spirit? Okay. How many people aren't? Come on. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I'm not going to judge you. This is a not a judgment zone at all. So, is there anybody here that wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Whether you just raised your hand or not. Has anybody seen any value in that? It's okay. I like crickets. They make good fishing bait. <laughs> And, you know, Jesus said he was going to turn us into fisher of people. So, you know. So what I would say is if you didn't raise your hand and um, you uh, raised it the second time and then you didn't raise it the third time, God has this awesome, awesome gift that he wants you to have that changed my life. My testimony is that it changed my life. It has given me the strength and the knowledge to do things that I never believed were possible. And as a member of this congregation, as one of our, you can tell I'm Catholic, as a member of, the, or, or was, as a member of this church, there's nothing more that I would want for anybody here other than salvation is to, to fully use the gifts of the Holy Spirit because it's like, to me, you know what it was like? It was like getting in the car, driving to Hershey, getting to Hershey Park, getting out of the car, looking through the gate, seeing the ride, but not buying a ticket. That, that's the best way I can explain it to you is all the fun, all the excitement was right there in front of me. And for, I don't know how many years, 10 years, I stood at the gate and didn't buy the ticket. And then I bought the ticket, and it was the best thing I ever did. So I know that Pastor Jerry or Pastor Richie or pa Pastor Rachel and anybody here on staff, would love to pray with you to help you receive that gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, man, that clock keeps changing time. It goes from, what time is it?
In one minute, it's like 11.30, and the next minute, it's 11.50. So I didn't know I was out of time, and then all of a sudden, I got all the time in the world. But Johnny's over here, so that means it must be time, because he listens to the Holy Spirit, and he knows that it's time for Rich to shut up. <laughs> and I listen to the Holy Spirit, too. So I said all that stuff, okay, to say this. God wants you to be a troublemaker. He really does. He, want, he wants you to walk into the room and change the status quo. He wants you to be that person that walks through Walmart and is in the aisle and people go, whoa, what is it about that person? What is it about that guy? What is it about that girl? Look at that lady with her baby, you know? Just spewing the love of God. That's what God wants us to do. He just wants us to do the best we can. Are we perfect? No, only Jesus is. Um, have I prophesied over somebody and missed it? Of course, a lot of times, a lot of times. But we got to try. We have to pray in tongues because that is the difference that it makes. Every evangelist that I have, or revivalist, that I have read and learned about over the past couple months, the praying in tongues has made a huge difference in their ministry. And I know Pastor Jerry, I've, I've said this before, he taught me to sing in tongues, and I'm going to do that right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> if the offering plate is full, <laughs> no. So, is there an altar team? Yes, of course there is. I think the, the, no, I'm pointing to the, the well, I'm pointing to the one I'm especially fond of <laughs> over there. You too, Chris and Margie and Chris and Patty. So if anybody needs prayer for anything, these, these people are here to pray with you, to speak into your life, to listen to the Holy Spirit and um, help you with it, whatever is going on in your life. They're here for you. It's a non-judgment zone. Just come forward and give it to God. You know, if, if you don't want to talk to anybody, you can just come up here and kneel. But uh, my challenge is as we wrap this up and go home, go cause some trouble. Be a troublemaker. Make Jesus proud. Make God proud. I don't think there's anything you could do to make him happier than to go out and cause some trouble today, this week, and uh, brighten up that kingdom. Praise you all. Let's pray. Father, oh, Father, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father, I just pray over everybody here, Lord, that uh, there'd be a big group of troublemakers. And as they head out through those doors, that's the mission field. That's the place where you sent us. This isn't the mission field. The mission field is on the outside of those doors. So Lord, send these troublemakers out. Lord, let them see Jesus in us, Lord. Use us in ways we never dreamed possible, Father. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Lord, I just pray that these words wouldn't fall void and that people would be encouraged to go cause trouble. Get out of here, troublemakers. Amen. Amen. Thank you.